For years, the image of the American dream has inspired and drawn in immigrants from all over the world. Once immigrants realized the American dream, they soon realized the consequences that most ethnic families encounter. One of the consequential issues is dealing with one's own ethnic identity in a land full of different cultures, traditions, and values. Moreover, the children of immigrant families also face difficulties growing up as ethnic children in America, as they get to the crossroads between two worlds while trying to choose a compromise that will satisfy both worlds. America has taken in immigrants from all over the world, including the Middle East. It is estimated that nearly 3 million Americans trace their roots to an Arab country. The Arab American Institute reports that the state of Ohio is one of the top five states where a large Arab American population resides. Hello and welcome. We're here in the beautiful main campus of the University of Toledo in Ohio. It's one of the many universities that celebrate and recognize students' cultural diversity in every aspect of daily life. At least five to 10% of UT students have Arab descent. I got to meet Humam Salahi, a third year pre-med student here at the university. Original from Syria, he now has been living in the US for over seven years. So far, Humam has explained a lot to me about the Arab life in America. So Humam, what's it like being an Arab Muslim raised in Syria, living here now? Is that hard? In the beginning it was. Um, you know, I was really young when I got here and all I worried about was trying to fit in with the people and the culture um, and trying to make sure that I didn't forget my own people and my own culture. Um, and, you know, as you know by now, there are a lot of differences that we had to deal with. Um, and even Arabs born here, I think, have to deal with. So. Indeed, there are differences. Factors that truly affect the way Arab Americans live in America. One important factor is religion. Most Arab Muslim families are less likely to relate with the Caucasian majority culture and typically identify more with subcultures in which their religious, national origin, and language traditions are preserved. This is the prayer room. Uh, this is where everybody comes in uh, and prays. Uh, I think it's really nice for students to come here and practice their own religion. You know? that, that definitely has, that's another thing too. Because for Muslims, Religious practices that direct personal behavior include the five-time daily prayers, the month-long fast during Ramadan, the obligatory paying of alms, and the wearing of the hijab for women. However, all these religious practices require special accommodations at work, at school, and in the public, thereby making Muslims more visible than most religious minorities and thus often vulnerable to bigotry. So, Mary, do people treat you differently because of your religion alone? Um, no, not at all, actually. They understand and respect me for it, and I make it clear to them that I am a Muslim and that some things they do, I can't. Well, whenever we I hang out with a group of friends and Mom and Miriam are there, we usually try to keep it casual, not too crazy, because we know they don't drink. Uh, sometimes we'll go to the bar and they'll just tag along, but they won't drink, but they kind of stopped doing that. Um, I think the environment made them feel uncomfortable. Yeah, like, I have my American friends and then they're my friends, and it's hard to compromise between the both of them, so it makes me sad sometimes. Yeah, you really want to bring them all in the picture and hang out with them. Right. Do you ever uh, feel out of place or left out when you're around, around American friends? No, not at all. I have my beliefs and they have theirs, and I, we respect each other for it. We all still hang out. And Aside from religion, culture also characterizes Arabs and distinguishes them from other ethnicities. Most intercultural scholars tend to view the Arab and American cultures as cultural opposites. One thing I have a hard time dealing with is with my American friends. Um, I always have to express um, my thoughts and feelings and beliefs. Of, with my Arabic friends, it's pretty much known. I don't have to convey anything in words. It's it's just known within our culture. It's understood. It's Un there. Understand, yeah, understand. This is what scholars call high-context and low-context cultures. The difference between high-context 
and low contact depends on how much meaning is found in the contact versus in the code. Unlike the Arabic culture, which is a high context culture, the American culture tends to place more meaning in the language code and very little meaning in the context. Today I asked uh, many Arab Americans what they valued most in their culture, and many of them said family. Family is the cornerstone of our culture. We value family, honor, and I think our personal actions and achievements reflect the entire family. Well, one thing that uh, one of my Arab friends told me that I found really interesting is the way that they treat their parents. Uh, he said that when he was getting yelled at when he was like a younger kid, that he would look down at the floor. Uh, he did, wouldn't look his parents in the eyes, and when I was little, I would look at the floor because I knew I was being yelled at and punished, and my mom would be like, you know, look at me when I'm talking to you, and so that's like the difference I found really interesting, so. Because family is so important, your family background is something that defines you as a person in the Arab world. This is something that we look at when we make friends, get married, or even make business with others. Unfortunately, due to religious and cultural differences between the Americans and the Arab countries, most Americans still do not understand Arabs as people. However, this lack of understanding is not merely a set of attitudes that exist in popular culture, nor is it solely a matter of ignorance. It is a deep-rooted problem with historic and religious roots. So, Humam, why do you think many Americans have misunderstandings about Arab Americans? I think it has a lot to do with media these days. Whatever passes for educational purposes, most of the time, reinforce only negative images. I think they provide too often a one-sided view of the Middle East. Even in films and movies, the portrayals of Arabs are most of the time hostile. So I think that has a lot to do with it. I think what we need today is more knowledge, facts I should say, about the different cultures and ethnicities. We need to first understand our own cultural framework and be interested to know about the many cultures we work with. We should ask, listen, observe, and be brave enough to respond to any cultural changes that we face. A long and difficult road remains before us. As of today, Arab Americans are increasingly becoming a part of the American process in some fashion. The inclusion of Arabs is helping to close the gap in understanding that which has existed for so long the Arab community. As we proceed, the beneficiaries will not only be the Arab ethnic community, America can also become more unified because it will be able to understand and embrace the culture better or carry out diplomatic negotiations while respecting external culture. America will be better enabled to protect its values and protect its interests while developing relationships based on mutual respect. Squirrel, I got a tail, you just can't see it. Okay. Um, 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 um. Exactly, like, exactly, like, exactly, like, exactly, like. Can you look at tomato? Fine. She's not gonna say it right anyway, so. <laughs> 